In September of this year, flames engulfed the United States West Coast. During the worst wildfires in decades, forests, homes and businesses were destroyed. Part of our family lives in Northern California and have been literally evacuated back into their homes, back out. One lost their home uh, mid last week and everybody else is choked with smoke coming out of the fires. Then you have the virus on top of everything else and a lack of leadership or leadership being being hobbled by this uh, virus and what to do about it and obviously uh, outside of the money markets which seem to be doing really well things feel really apocalyptic the philanthropist chris tompkins has been working in conservation and rewilding projects since the early 1990s when you come at things from our point of view, you have to be triply careful that you don't start to make connections where perhaps technically there are none. But I will say this, everything is in the extreme today and this is not an earth that is in balance, either socially or ecologically. I think we're, we're all thinking about things, these things a lot and what are the root causes of them and not just superficially what's going on, but what are the trigger points for these viruses, for climate change, and so on. So yeah, I think about it every day. Tompkins has been thinking about these issues every day for decades. In the early 1990s, she left California to travel to Chile with her late husband, Doug Tompkins. She was leaving an executive role at the clothing company Patagonia, he was the founder of the clothing line The North Face. They both left behind a corporate lifestyle to focus on their passion. And we were, we were really two refugees coming out of the business world and wanted to do something in conservation with the last third of our lives. So Doug knew something about Chile and Argentina for various reasons and <clears throat> we ended up down there uh, acquiring large tracts of land, working with governments, and then eventually donating these, these lands back to either the Chilean or Argentine governments. And we've created 13 national parks so far for just under 15 million acres. In 2019, America's now traveled to southern Chile to see the work done by the foundation firsthand and also see how their approach to conservation has evolved. About 10, 12 years ago, we began to realize that protecting the land or the sea is part of the problem. But we began to realize that landscape without wildlife is just scenery. So this was a wake up call for us that our job's not done in a particular project until we have rewild the species that should be there but have gone extinct for various reasons over time. And that really changed the landscape of our work utterly. Tompkins Conservation now has a series of wildlife programs across South America's Southern Cone at natural reserves that seek to reintroduce species that have been all but lost to human activity. Tompkins says they were greeted with suspicion when they first arrived. It was a tectonic shift in the thinking in Chilean cultures. We were known as the, the couple who cut Chile in half. But that was a very serious, serious and long playing name for us. The people who cut the country in half. Land donated by Tompkins Conservation now forms part of Chile's Route of Parks, an ambitious project that links national parks along the country. And the Foundation's work takes on a fresh importance as wildfires rage not only in North America, but across swathes of the Southern Cone and Brazil. Tompkins is concerned by what she is seeing in the region. The situation in the Amazon is going to come to a head and, and I can't help but think that eventually 
if they continue to burn that the rate they're doing, I can't believe it's not going to be a global reaction to toward Brazil over that. I mean, this is just me speaking. I'm a private citizen. What do I know? But the the lungs of the Amazon are f- really functioning at a global level and these resource wars that influence and affect global citizens they're going to have different kinds of repercussions in the in the future i think there is an inherent conflict between conservation and development everywhere in the world if if you're going to conserve something it says by nature that you're not going to be able to develop it there's always going to be a faction of any country that thinks that national parks are a waste of time it's a waste of of uh good economic use and those who really want to see their patrimony protected this foundation has plowed millions of dollars into its various projects and its ethos is the responsibility of people to act particularly those people with power I really believe that the moment for inaction from anybody we are so far past that and shame on us if we are especially people of wealth political power social power that you sit on your hands and not jump in educate yourself to what's going on what are the root causes of it and get yourself in gear and i would say that's a special responsibility because the more you get in your life then the more you should be giving tompkins conservation continues its work in transforming ecosystems and working to bring back animals from near extinction in terms of rewilding i think we are making a difference there in terms of the the aggressiveness that that you can put forth to bring back jaguars, giant anteaters, giant otters, waymole deer, uh uh lesser rays, you name it. The list is long now. I think that rewilding is happening around the world and I think anybody who's working at it whether it's down um in southern england or in scotland or romania or chile and argentina wherever it is that is not that's not turning around that's a movement restoring land sea wildlife community dignity those are that's a trend not an exception now and that feels great and i don't pretend to say that we we were the ones who did that but we love participating in it